8502. Na-receive ko, na-receive ko yung handouts. 8503 na sa inyo na. Okay. Yung 8502 is about activity-based costing. No? Introduce muna natin. Pag siya yung discussion, ha? theoretical muna. Now, let us recall. Ito, replay na lang. Pag uh, topic yung about cost, as we said before, you must know how to classify. You must know how to accumulate and assign costs. Now, to what again do you assign costs? You assign costs to the so-called cost object for a manufacturing firm. This is the product being produced by the firm. Kung tawagin nila, finished goods. So, dulo, we want to know the cost of our product. Ngayon, for a manufacturing firm, yung cost ng product na yan, ang laman, manufacturing costs. Now, what are those manufacturing costs? Materials, labor, overhead. Kaya, pag may binili yung company, classify mo. Siya may materials, labor, overhead, then, accumulate. Ang pinag-usapan natin yung accumulation nun, cost accounting systems, job order, process, tsaka yung combination, operations costing, no? Pero, of course, tayo accountants, pag may mga costs that we incur, kahit na job order, process costing pa yan, we don't just list down the cost, no? Mga non-accountants, eh, nasa isang papel, ito yung product, ito ang mga gastos, we list lang. Pero tayo, hindi ganon. Sa bagay, yung style nila, anong tawag natin doon, natutuhan nyo sa accounting one, That's what you call single entry accounting. Diba? He just list down the cost incurred. Pero hindi kayo doon sanay. Sanay kayo saan? Double entry accounting. No? So, every transaction that you record, you journalize. Debit, credit, some accounts. And then you post to the appropriate ledger accounts. Okay, hanggang makarating kayo sa cost of the product. Uh, pasensya na, review nga natin. Pamilyar kayo kasi nasa mas ang iba sa inyo nasa accounting na ng kumpanya. No? So, alam nyo pinag-usapan. Okay, re re uh, review nga tayo ng journal entries ng manufacturing firms. O pagsyagaan nyo, ano? Yung mga mga kliyente, manufacturing firm, which is under the perpetual inventory system. Ano ba yung isa? Perpetual? Ano ba isa? Periodic. Periodic okay. So, itong kliyente natin, hindi periodic, no? Perpetual. Okay, first transaction of our client, Uh, the company purchased materials on account. Okay? Entry. Uh, the company purchased materials on account. David? Mm -hmm. Raw materials. So, di kaya materials na lang. May naririnig akong purchases. Yung purchases on system yan. Sa periodic. Sa periodic yun. Sabi ko kanina, perpetual. No? Okay, so, materials, David? Credit accounts payable. Di ba ang sistema sa totoong buhay eh, i-deliver yung materials that we purchase. Pag malaki kumpanya, may receiving department. So, may receive no, natural, no? Tapos natin yung si staff room. Yung staff room, may custodian. Okay, so, may mga cards siya doon. Ang iba, kung tawagin bin cards, to record ins and outs of the materials para sa inventories. Ngayon, nalimbawa, yung mga taga-production, okay, they need na materials because they will produce na the products. The magre-requisition sila ng materials from the stock room. Okay, posible mag-fill out sila ng materials request slip. Sa iba, ganun eh. No? Pag nakita ng custodian, o sige, may stock nito, magre-release yan. Ano naman ang document? Materials issue slip. But may mga ganun pa para source documents for journal entries aside from internal control. No? Okay, so nag-issue ng materials from stock room to the production area kasi magpo-produce na ng products. Okay? Ano? Entry. Debit. Oh, ang tagal ng journal entry na. Okay. <laughs> Ulit. Nag-release ng materials from the stock room to the production area. Because the production staff will now produce the goods. Debit. Ayun. Work in process and credit. Okay. Uh, Dinebit nyo work in process. Di ba kaya nag-issue ng materials para gamitin sa production? Di ba pag na-produce naman yun, magiging famous goods? 
hindi mo pwede debit pay this goods ka lang. Punta tayong gumaan sa working process. Eh, doon din naman pupunta yun. Tingin niya. Ayaw mo na ganang. Ayaw. Okay. So gusto niyang gamitin yung working process account. Alam mo, if you want to use the working process account, you want to trace the flow of the costs and the goods. Okay? Kaya bawat kilos may journal entry. Pero meron isang system, hindi na nagre-record ng working process. Di ba? Pag nag-issue ng materials, memo entry lang. Wala talagang formal na journal entry. Sige lang, release na release. Pagka yung tao sumuendo, okay, nag-no-note lang siya. Memo entry lang din. Okay, para alam din kung magkano. Ngayon, pag finish na yung goods, tsaka lang siya mag-prepare ng entry. So in that system, you don't record working process. You don't use working process account. Pag natapos na, debit finish goods. Tapos credit materials, credit uh, uh, payroll, kung yun na ginamit na akong sa umpisa. Okay, so diretso sa finish goods. Pero, nire-record pagka finish na. Anong system yan? Hello? Letter B. Yun, back plus costing. Okay. Di ba may ganun? Sa back plus costing, you don't use work in process account. Magkitipid na lang sa journal entries. Diretso na sa finish goods. Pero, as I have said, re-record mo lang finish goods pag finish na. Hindi po pwedeng nag-release ng materials. Dahil with finish goods sa gap, in close in parenthesis, soon. Walang ganun, no? Okay, ito po si Mumuna. Kaya lang doon nga, hindi mo na natitrace yung flow ng costs and goods. Okay, basta sige lang. Sa dulo, tsaka magre-record. Nagtitipid. Pero, siguro mas maganda nga ito, no? Okay, uh, maintain tayo ng work in process account. What is this? The work in process account serves as a temporary storage of costs. Okay? Paano temporary storage of costs? Yan mo muna ipopost yung mga costs to manufacture that you incurred. Hindi diretso sa business goods. So, ang tawag dito, this is what you call cost pool. Okay? So, the work in process account is an example of a cost pool. It serves as a temporary storage of costs. Pag nag-release ng materials, debit na work in process para sa materials. Pag nagpayad ng sweldo para sa mga workers directly involved in production, debit work in process para yun sa direct labor. Okay. Pag gumasos ng overhead item, yung iba, debit work in process. Okay. Kaya lang, we know very well that overhead is composed of so many items. Na? Okay, uh, hanggang ng indirect materials, indirect labor, light water, etc. Ngayon, uh, yung iba, as they incur overhead costs, kahit gaano karami yon, debit work in process. Kaya lang pag gano'n naman ang style, gugulo work in process account ko. Kasi dito lahat papasok eh. Na? So what do, what do they do, yung ibang mga companies? They maintain another cost pool account. Kung tawagin nila, factory overhead control. So, factor over control, as you incur overhead cost, dito mo muna yung papasok. So, therefore, the overhead control serves also as a cost pool. So, ito, cost pool din. And this is there where you post the actual, no? Actual overhead cost. So, debit mo yung working process for the actual materials cost incurred, working process actual, labor cost incurred, tapos ito for actual. So, in effect here, the company records all costs at actual. Okay. Kaya, halimbawa, nag-release ng indirect materials from the staff room, debit, uh, debit over control for the indirect materials. Nagbayad ng sweldo ng supervisor sa factory. Hindi ba? Indirect labor yun. O debit overhead control for, for indirect labor. Nagbayad ng kuryente. Yung share ng factory, i-allocate sa kanya. So, magkakaroon ng uh, cost of electricity for the factory debit over control. Kaya ako sinasabi ko na yung share lang. Sa isang pangkaraniwan, sa isang company, isa lang ang bill ng Meralco. Halimbawa, no? Ngayon, yung ibang ang gasos sa konsya, kuryente, konsumo ng sales department. Iba, konsumo ng accounting department. Iba, ibang departments. At may consumption yung factory. Maganda sana kung may submitter para nakocompute bawat department. Bakit? Kasi i-allocate yung cost na yun. Ngayon, kaya itong light na to para lang sa factory allocated na to. Nasusundan po sana natin, okay? Pero, pasok sa overhead control. So, yung light, kuryente, ha? Okay, ano pa? Posibleng yung water, ganun din, no? Uh, Ina-allocate din yan. Kasi isang bill lang yan, kung Maynilat or Manila Water Services, 
Teka muna, naipasok ko sa overhead control yung water. Tama ba na yung water overhead? Tama po ba na yung water overhead? Possible. Pwede. Pero pwede rin bang maging materials ang water? Oo, oh, depende sa gamit ng water. Di ba? Okay. Halimbawa, eh, ang product mo, uh, throughout drinks, no? uh, gamit mo water materials. O para madali, ngayari, product mo, mineral water. Ayan, ha? Kung mineral water ang product, ah, madali, ano materials nun? Pwede water, ano pa? Mineral, gano'n, ano, ano. Okay, um, so, pagkada, ano materials, ha? Pero dito, kunyari, overage yan, no? So, in there, water, like water depreciation, insurance, plus ang dami nito. Kung isa-isahin natin, gagabihin tayo. Okay, so, as you incur over cost, actual, post mo sa over control. Pag kumpleto na, total mo, and then what do you do? Close mo. To what do you close it? To the factory overhead control. Di ba ganun yan? Okay, so debit factory overhead control. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ito na pala siya. Uh, to the work in process account. No? Overhead control nga pala to. So, pasok mo na sa work in process. Kaya debit work in process para sa factory overhead. Na ito yun. Ngayon, kunyari, kompleto na to. Pasensya na. Plus, alam ko alam nyo na to. No? Pero, review nga eh. Okay, kaya kompleto na. May na-finish na na goods, alamin mo yung post niya, okay, tapos ang nagagawin mo, close mo na siya. How do you close? Credit mo yung working process, ano debit mo? Finish goods. Once you do this, you have assigned the cost to the cost and object. Kasi alam mo na kung magkano yung cost ng finish goods. Sa ano naman gagamitin yung cost ng finish goods na to? Well, Typically, sa computation na selling price, because as we discussed before, selling price is equal to cost plus markup. Yung cost na yan, kasama yung production cost. So, hanggang doon ang deal niya. No? Kaya lang, uh, paano sistema ka po? As the company incur, uh, incur overhead, papasok dito. Ay, actual. Kung magkano ginasos na madalas sa kalibo, post awarding process, actual. So lahat ito, actual cost. Kaya pag nag-credit na working process, debit finished goods, actual cost. If everything is recorded at actual, what kind of costing system is that? Mabigat po yata yung tanong ulit ko, no? If everything is recorded at actual, what kind of costing system is that? Actual. Actual costing. Plus, ganun lang yung simple. So, pag lahat actual, actual costing. Hello? Okay, so meron nung gano'n, actual costing. Maganda yun kasi actual agad, pero may defecto rin, may problema. Bakit? Pag nag-actual costing ka, mabagal takbo. Bakit to? Halimbawa, dito sa overhead control, okay, hindi mo maito, total yan, panggat pula. Ano pang karaniwang uh, matagal dumating? Yung mga bills. Halimbawa, bill ng kuryente. Hindi naman every month, the same date yan. Okay, bill ng tubig. Bill ng iba pa. Halimbawa, wala pa yung bill ng kuryente. Wala pa yung bill ng water. O, yun na lang example natin. Siyempre, hindi mo matototal to. Dahil kulang pa eh. Okay, hindi mo ma-close sa working process account. Di wala pa to. Hindi mo matototal. Hindi mo marirecord sa business schools. In other words, hindi mo pa malalaman na ganyan yung cost ng product mo. Hindi ka makapag-compute ng selling price. Kasi kulang pa ng cost. Is it possible, class? Tanong ulit. Is it possible, finish na yung goods, pero yung cost ko lang na? Hello po? Yes. Ito yes. yung example ngayon. Di ba? Ayun na, tapos na yung produkto, pero kulang pa sa costing. Ang problema, kung kulang pa yung costing, hindi pa makapagset ng selling price kinyari. Kasi naghihintay ng actual cost. Eh kung nakita ng customer, oh, meron na pala yan. Pagbilang nga yan, ay, ay hindi pa binibenta. <laughs> Bakit? Wala pang presyo. Diba? Ba't wala pang presyo? Plus, papaliwanag mo pa ba sa post naman? Eh, kasi naman yung bill ng Miracle, tagal eh. Ano? Wala na siyang pakialam doon. No? Ang punto lang, may nawawala na sa'yo. Okay, bibili mo sana, hindi mo mabenta. Bakit? Wala pang presyo. Nangyayari sa totoong buhay. Posibleng kayo, na-experience nyo, di ba? Hindi pa maibenta kasi wala pang price. Okay, ano problema nila? Actual costing sila. Pwede ko bang maremedyohan yun? Yes. Di huwag kang mag-actual costing. Ano'y papalit mo? standard costing. Okay. Tutuloy pa rin ang recording ng actual. Pero, mag-compute ka rin ng standards. So, i-record mo yung cost mo muna at standard. Pati yung computation ng selling price, nakabase yung cost at standard. So, you don't have to wait for the actual. 
ngayon nakapag-compute ka ng standard. Yung baba ito, uh, debit working process for the standard uh, cost of materials that should have been incurred. Ganon din for labor. No? So, for standard costs. Okay, ito, standard cost din. Pagka kinredit mo, standard, standard cost, finished goods sa standard. Kaya ang presyo mo, nakabase sa standard. So, you don't have to wait for actual. Pero, tuloy pa rin ang posting na actual. Sa dulo, pag kompleto na, compare actual with standard. Kung may difference, ano tawag sa difference between actual and standard? Variance. Okay, close the variance. So, you can adjust the standard because of good sold to actual. So, sa dulo, actual pa rin. Kaya lang, you don't have to wait. No? So, mangyayari nun, materials, labor, factor overhead, to be posted at uh, standard, everything is recorded at standard. Okay? Hanggang sa posting doon. Kanina, pagka everything is at actual, ang natawag ulit? Actual costing. Eh, ngayon naman, everything will be recorded at standard. How do you call that? Standard costing. Okay. Kaya lang iba, account plans naman, nagre-react doon. Sabi nila, ba't pag standard costing? Eh, para nga mabilis nga mag makapag-costing. Hindi eh. Kasi, ang problema lang naman, overhead eh. Yung materials, oh, di bilangin mo, ilan ang gamit sa production, madaling yung record actual, yung computation yan. Yung labor, ilang oras ang pinrabaho ng tao, madali yan. Hindi na nangailangan ng bill yan. Okay, so ganito na lang, suggestion nila. Yung materials and labor, taga, ano na nga tawag sa materials and labor pag kinumbayin? Okay, no? So yung prime cost, Record na lang natin at actual. Sabi nilang ganon. Yun na lamang overhead ang applied. Teka muna, ginamit kong word applied. Ano yung applied? Standard. Plus alam mo yun kasi yung word is standard, uh, maraming pangalan yan. No? Standard is also called applied. It is also called allowed. It is also called absurd. So yung apat na yun. Pagkagan nyo kasi ni-introduce sa ating chapter eh, para yung mga terminologies, okay, magpapamilyarize sa tayo para as we continue, tuloy-tuloy na lang, yung baga alam na natin siya, yun na na So, standard, applied, allowed, absorbed. Kapag nakita natin sa problem, overhead applied to production, standard yun. Okay, uh, overhead absorbed, overhead allowed in production, standard yun. Okay, so ibang term man ang gamitin, you know what that is, na? Okay, so, ang mangyayari dito, yung prime cost actual, yung overhead applied or standard. Magkahalo ngayon. Hindi mo na siya pwedeng tawagin actual costing kasi may halong standard. Hindi mo na siya pwedeng tawagin standard costing kasi may halong actual. Plus kayo naman, ano tawag dito? Ano pa? Yun, narinig ko, normal costing. Okay? At ito pang karamiwan kahit sa exam, di ba? Normal costing. So, how do you describe normal costing? Under normal costing, prime costs are recorded at actual, overhead is applied. So, siya lang. Siya lang naman kasi talaga problema. Yung overhead na yan, kung papasok sa usapan yan, problema na lang yan. Okay? Kahit sa, ibang, sa, sa futures, sa ibang topics. So, again, prime costs are recorded at actual, Overhead is applied. And when you say applied, standard. Ngayon ang tanong, how do you apply overhead? Okay, ang sagot, you must have an overhead application rate. Tanong ulit, what do you mean by overhead application rate? Aplas, the word na application. Application, ano wrong word nun? Ulit po, sana usap tayo, class, no? Hindi na kailangan ulitin yung tanong para hindi tayo masyadong gabihin. Okay, yung, yung word na application, ano root word? Apply. Apply. Imposible yun namang cation, di ba? Okay, so kung yung root word ng word application ay apply, so we submit application rate is applied rate or is standard rate. So ulitin ko yung tanong, no? How do you apply overhead? Sagot kanina, you must have an overhead application rate. In other words, you must have an overhead standard rate. Now, any other term for our standard rate? Meron pa po. It is a predetermined rate. Ngayon, when you say predetermined, that is determined in advance. Kailan din i-establish ang standard rate? Gano'n ka advance? Even before you start operating, establish mo na standards mo. Para pagka nag-operate ka, i-apply mo na. Okay. So, kailan? 
sa planning stage pa lang. Planning stage pa lang, naka-establish na yung standards or application rates. Okay, sa planning stage, ano ho ba ginagawa sa planning stage? Natural plan. Lago naman kung stage. Ano ho ba yung plan? Uh, pagka yung plan nag-qualify, pwede siyang tawagin budget. Ba't may salita pang ganun pag nag-qualify? Kasi sa future, mag-discuss natin pagdating natin sa chapter ng budgeting. No? All budgets are plans. But not all plans are budgets. Kaya salita ko kanina, yung plan mo pag nag-qualify, that may be considered as a budget. In other words, sa planning stage, nagpe-prepare tayo ng budget. Pag first time preparation, doon mag-establish tayo ng standards for overhead. Our overhead application rate. Okay, ano ba mga activities involved pag nasa planning stage tayo? No? Gagawa tayo ng plan or budget for the first time. Okay, the first thing to know pag gumagawa ng plan, you must know the capacity of your plan. Ito yung una mong alamin. What is the capacity? No, halimbawa, ito yung planta. Okay, ano capacity? Ano ba yung capacity? Capacity is what you can produce given your resources. Tagalog po, yung kaya mong gawin. Ilan kaya mo? So, sa salita, yung kakayahan. So, capacity is kakayahan. Sa ibang lingwahe, kapasidad. Ilan ang kayang gawin? Ito yung planta. Gano'ng kalaki ito? Okay, ilan ang machineries dito? Ilan ang tao magtatrabaho? Ilang oras gagawa? Okay, bawat shift, ilang shifts? Ganun. With that, you can determine how many can be produced per period. Ano yung naalam? Capacity. Okay, bakit ito alamin ang capacity? Yan tayo mag-base ng plan. No? Halimbawa, hindi ko matandaan kung dito sa room nyo, uh, ang ginamit ko example noong in-introduce ko yung mga boss elements eh, production ng polo. Ginamit ko ba rito yan? Uh, oh, sige nga, balik nga natin yan. Gagawa tayo ng polo, mass production. Anong costing system na nga gagamitin? Kasi mass production, job order process. Process. Mm -hmm. Uh, paano nga sistema? We buy materials, basic materials ng polo, tela. Sabi ko nga nun, rolyo-rolyo, maramihan, di ba? O tapos nakarolyo yung tela, dadating, o mag-umpisa na tayong gumawa ng polo. Ano first step na nga? First uh, process? Cutting. So, patuloy mo muna, base sa pattern. So, yun na rin ang magiging first department natin, cutting department. Pero hindi manual to. Okay, so, how many cutting equipments can be installed here? Gano'ng karami? ilang tao gagawa. Okay, gano'ng karami magpuputol? Ano ulit ang inaalam? Capacity. O, naputol na ho, base sa pattern. Tatahiin na. Kaya ano susunod na department? Sewing department. Again, gagamit ang sewing machines, yung mga industrial sewing machines. Ilan ho kaya may install, ilang tao, etc. O, ano ulit ang inaalam? Capacity. So, sa umpisa pa lang, dinidetermine na po yung capacity. So, no? Okay, pagkatapos sumatahi, siguro finish yung department na. Pagkatapos, bakit yung department? Okay, hanggang dali na sa staff. Dahil finish list na sila. Okay, ngayon, uh, anong capacity level ang basis ng plan natin? Okay, but because there are three types of capacity levels. What are the three types of capacity levels? One, meron yung tinatawag na ideal. Ideal or theoretical capacity. Bakit ito ideal? Parang nasa pedestal. Okay, napaka-ideal. Bakit ito theoretical? Hanggang theories lang. Mahirap sa practice. But naman, because yung ideal or theoretical capacity requires perfect performance. Okay? It requires perfect performance. Plus, pag sinabing perfect, ilang mali? natural. <laughs> Nabihan ka ng prof mo. Congrats, naka-perfect ka sa exam. Tatlo mali mo. Maawayin mo yung prof mo na yun. Diba? Okay. Perfect na yan. So, if, if it requires perfect performance, anong ibig sabihin yan? It is not not attainable. Ang hirap abutin. Okay. Uh, not attainable. Okay. Bakit ito not attainable? It, was, it requires perfect performance and nobody is perfect. Sino mananahi ang perfect? May magkakamali dyan. Okay. Pag perfect, performance, no wastage, no losses, no interruption, no stopping, no brownout, no machine breakdown. Perfect nga eh, di ba? No, 
Nabusan na ako, no? ID, no? Entry ba sa lahat ng no? Okay? Um, kaya ho ba natin yun? No? Kaya ba natin yun? Bawal, bawal mag-stop, bawal whatever? Halimbawa, yung mananahe. Kailangan ko ang shift nila 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Before 8 a.m., nakaporma na sila, nakaupo na sa, ma sa harap ng makina nila, pero wala pang kikilos. Kasi perfect on the dot. Pag wala pang alas 8, wala pa. Pag date nagsaktong alas 8, sabay-sabay mananahin na yan. <laughs> Next time, kirin ko lang. Okay. May bawa, nananahin na. Power minto. Kung hindi rin lang break. Okay. Eh, naubusan ang sinulit. Yung makina, di ba, meron full of thread. Bawal yun. Bawal yun. Magbawal kasi mahihinto. Pag naubusan ng thread yun, pwede hihinto dahil magkakabit na naman ng sinulit. Di ba? Dapat bago mag-start, enough yung sinulit. Okay, hindi naman pwede sabihin. Eh, di dapat forever yung sinulit. Eh, wala namang forever. Di ba? Okay. Uh, eh, limbawa, uh, yung isang mananahe, nagtatak, nagtatawag yung supervisor, boss, uh, bakit? Magpasok si CR na ako, bawal. Okay. Kasi mahihinto. Iwanan niya makin. Nangihinto yun. Diba? Boss eh, mahihinto ako, bawal. Taysin mo. Sa break na lang. Mahihinto lang yan. Boss, nangihinto talaga. O oh, sige, sige. CR ka. Dalin mo makin na mo. Kasi may exaggerate ko lang. Sabi mo kasi, uh, perfect eh. No interruption, no stopping, whatever. Of course, kaya ako in-exercise na ganun. Alam ko naman magiging reaction nyo. Pwede ba yun? No? Yung posible naman hindi mausap-ubusan na si Mulip yan. Yung posible naman yung tao hindi mag-jingle, mag-CR. Okay, normal lang ba mag-CR ang tao? Oo. Kung hindi nag-CR, yun ang hindi normal. <laughs> diba? Tao ka eh. Okay. Eh pagka ganun, paano, eh, hindi talaga kanya mag-aya nga nakatay na guli. Yung posible naman kasi kaya, nobody's perfect. Sasabihin mo, God is perfect. Oh, of course, I believe that God is perfect. Oh, pero class, mahiya ka naman sa God ko siya pag tatahin mo ng mga tono na ito. Kaya niya yung perfect performance, pero hindi na siya tatay, hindi na lang tayo tunong sa kanya. No? Okay, anyway, um, hindi, hindi, okay, pati ko pinag-uusapan pa, hindi pa natin na ball, starting point. Yan tayo mag-start. No? Kunyari, ang idea ng theoretical capacity, 1,200 units. Ngari lang yan. Okay, normal lang na mag-CR. Normal lang na mag-uusan ng thread yung, uh, yung makina normal lang na, etc. Yung mga normal na yon, mag-provide ka ng allowance for those. Okay? Mag-provide ka ng allowance for unavoidable. No? Unavoidable wastages, losses, etc. na. No? O kanyari, in-estimate natin yung unavoidable wastages, losses, etc. Of course, due, due to normal reasons. Kanyari, 200. So, anong ibig sabihin yan? We'll come up with a capacity level that is 100 units. That is now attainable. Bakit? Kasi under normal operating conditions. Kaya, ano ko tawag doon? That will be called normal capacity. So, nag-start tayo sa ideal or theoretical capacity and then i-adjust natin to normal. May gagawa tayo ng budget. Remember, kahit na nag-discuss na ganito, nag-establish tayo ng predetermined overhead rates. Pag gagawa ka ng budget, no, when you're preparing a budget, where will, to what will you base your budget? Okay, ideal or normal? Natural, normal. Ba't ka mag-base ng plan mo sa ideal, you know very well it cannot be attained. Ba't ka gagawa ng plan ng alam mo hindi attainable? So therefore, every time we prepare our plan or our budget, we base it at the normal level. In fact, for problem solving purposes, when the problem is silent, normal capacity is equal to budgeted capacity. Madagdag na sa mga assumptions natin sa problem solving. Ngayon, ang capacity, pwede in terms of units. Pagka in terms of units, production. Pwede rin ho naman in terms of time or number of hours. Kaya, in, some, in other cases, no, when the problem is silent, normal production is equal to budgeted production or normal time is equal to budgeted time. Okay, basta normal equals budgeted. Bakit po natin kailangan i-consider ito? Kasi baka mamaya, ang given sa problem, budgeted. Eh, kailangan mo yung normal sa pag-establish ng rate. Yun din yun. O di kaya, nagpe-prepare ka ng budget. Saan mo i-base? Sa normal. 
Okay? Eh, wala akong given na normal. Sabi, budget and production. Yun na mismo yun. Because normally was budgeted when the problem is silent. Now, you might say, eh, may nabasa po ako sa pangklaseng capacity. Ano yun? Eh, tawag ko niya, practical capacity. Meron din yan. Okay? Eh, ginamit din ko niyang basis in computing standard rates. Pwede rin. Eh, di pwede palang normal, pwede practical. Yes. Anong pagkakaiba nila? Okay, difference between normal and practical capacity. Normal capacity, long term. Practical capacity, short term. Okay, long term, normal. Practical, short term. Halimbawa, your capacity level for next year. Ah, next year lang yun, practical. Okay, your, your capacity for 5 years to 10 years. Tagal nun, normal. Now, you are computing standard rate for overhead. Parehong given. Practical capacity and normal capacity. Saan mo i-base? E eh, parehong pwede, di ba? Pag parehong pwede, I mean, pag parehong given, since parehong pwede gamitin. Okay, ano gagamitin? Whatever is stated in the problem. So it must be stated. Pag parehong given, dapat state ng problem. Ano basis ng company? Bakit ito? Company policy yun. Ang company policy dapat stated. Okay, sila nakakaalam nun. Eh, syempre, tatanong mo yun. What if, okay, both are given, pero the problem is silent. Okay, for problem-solving purposes. Hindi sinabi ng problem kung ano ginagamit ng company, normal or practical, pero parehong given. Okay, which one do you use? Okay, ganito po yun. Bakit po ulit natin pinag-usapan to? Mag-establish tayo ng application rates or standard rate. Halimbawa sabi, standard rate for over 5 pesos per hour, palaging 5 pesos per hour yon. Magbabago lang yun pag talagang hindi na realistic, okay? Uh, kung di, hindi na talaga updated. Pero hanggat okay ba siya, siya pa rin. Kung abutin siya ng limang taon, limang taon siya standard rate. In other words, pag establish ng rate, ano nasa isip mo? Long term, short term? Long term. Right? Kasi standard nga, palagi ganyan yan. Long term na sa isip mo. So kung long term, ano ba siya? Normal. Okay, ngayon, uh, gagamitin mo lang ang practical pag stated ng problem. Pag walang sinabi ang problem, palagi normal. Plus, itong mga dinidiscuss namin na to, dadalhin mo to sa ibang chapters. No? Hanggang doon sa overhead variance analysis, kakailangan nyo yan. Sa topic na product costing, absorption and variable costing, kakailangan nyo ito. So, kumbaga, hanggang na yun, nagbibuild tayo ng foundation. Kaya hindi tayo diretso sa problem solving eh. Kung tuto sa problem solving, ang dali-dali yan eh. Okay, two hours tapos yan eh. Kaya lang may ganito. So, kasi dadali natin hanggang future. Okay, anyway, so, na-establish na ko kunyari yung normal. Hanggang nga ito, 1,000 units. Ganito nga yung gagawin natin. Kasi ang capacity, pwedeng units, pwedeng hours. Okay. Uh, itong units, 1,000. That is the normal level. Okay, kaya ang pinag-uusapan natin, overhead. Ang overhead cost, pwede i-compute based on units, pero pwede rin i-compute based on number of hours. Ngayon, anong number of hours pang karaniwan pag overhead? Uh, labor hours o machine hours? Overhead, pinag-uusapan po natin. Class na kasi na hindi po karanina. Overhead application rate. Okay? Uh, papunta na po tayo sa establishment ng rate. Yung units, walang problema yan. Units of products. Pero pwede rin yung number of hours. Okay? Anong number of hours, pangkaroon yung ginagamit? Uh, uh, labor hours, machine hours. Ang uh, totoo, pwede yung parehong ginagamit yun eh. Depende kung ano nature ng operations ng company. Yung bang company ay labor intensive. Pag labor intensive, halos puro manual ang operation. Labor hours. Pero pagka naman ho, automated, alam nyo naman yun, di ba? Pag automated, use, uh, pag ano yun, machines ang gumagaw, ang gumagawa, nagtatrabaho, ano magandang gamitin? Machine hours. Naalala ko yung labor intensive na yan. Ewan ko na ikwento ko sa inyo. Nandung nag-release yung board exam, itong ba makailan? <coughs> Eh di yung mga pumasa, nagpupuntahan, bumabalik dito, nagpapatank you, at uh, naasikaso na nila yung PRC nila, yung gano'n na na. Okay, tsaka yung testimonial dealer nila noon, uh, bumibili na silang ticket, para, okay, pagdating dyan, di, sir, si Trina, o oh, mga gano'n. Merong isa, may dalang pasalubong, 
Cio, ni yan, butong pakuan. Kaso lugo niya. Yan no? nakuwento ko before sa klase, nahili ka pa sa butong pakuan eh. Okay? Butong pa, wow! Kaya ganyan. Pagbukas niya, sa'yo buka ka. Ito, ba't kulay puti? Di ba klasa ang butong pakuan kulay itin? Baka naman ka kung butong kalabasa yan. Yung mm, squash seeds ba yan? Baka butong kalabasa yan. Ba't puti? Hindi eh, sa'yo, butong pakuan to. Eh, ba't puti? Sa tanggal na yung balat. Ha? <laughs> ah. Hindi <laughs> ba plus yung, yung pagkain ng butong pakwan, nahan doon yung trin sa pagtatanggal mo ng balat eh, di ba? <laughs> Tapos tinanggalan ng balat, <laughs> wala ng trin. Meron pa lang ganyan, ay oo, may nabibili talaga niya, tanggal mo yung balat. Ah, sayang, habi ko ba? Bakit sayang? Kasi akit na ako sa klase, hindi na ako makakain, ganyan mo. So, thank you, thank you, ganun na lang. Pero sa labunan, misi ko kasi. Tanggal na balat. Tano kinanggal ang balat? <laughs> yung kumpanya na nagbenta nun, labor intensive o automated? <laughs> Imagine mo kung labor intensive, iba ang dami niyang factory workers ng trabaho magtanggal. Okay. Pero kung labor intensive siya, ang gagamitin labor hours. Kung automated siya, ang gagamitin machine hours. Okay, i-specify ng problem yon. Pero, if when the problem is silent, typically, ano ginagamit natin? Labor hours. Okay? Pangaraniman yon. Pero dapat din sabihin. Kung wala sinabi, labor hours. Ngayon, paano natin establish yon? Ilang oras, bawat polo na pinaproduce? Okay, anong establish? Standard. Standard time per unit. Paano yung establish yon? Pangaraniman, nagta-time in motion study. No? Pilot muna, okay, uh, gagawa ng project ng, ng polo o orasan yung magtatrabaho. May stopwatch yan. Yung normal na kilos, hindi nagmamadali, hindi babagal, okay, gano'ng katagal. So, may establish yung tinatawag na standard time per unit. Kunyari ho, ang standard time per unit, 2 hours, kunyari lang ho. And therefore, if the normal capacity is 1,000 units, ang ating budgeted time or normal time for the plant production of 1,000 units is 2,000 hours. Knowing this, pwede na ho tayo mag-prepare ng overhead budget. At mula sa overhead budget na yun, uh, doon tayo mag-establish ng standard rate. Okay. So, kunyari po, establish na. We know that the normal capacity is 1,000 units or 2,000 hours. Tinutuloy ko lang example. Paano ho nakuha yung 2,000 hours? Kasi kunyari, standard time per unit, 2,000. Ah, sorry, 2 hours, na? Ngayon, based on this, what are the overhead costs that we plan to incur? Magkano ang indirect materials? Magkano indirect labor? Magkano light, water, depreciation, etc.? Okay, magkano for this 2,000 hours. Okay, kunyari, tinotal. Kunyari, ang naging total, 100,000 pesos. Ano to? This is the budgeted factory overhead. And this budgeted factory overhead of 100,000, kompleto na lahat yan, lahat ng overhead items, puro budget ito. Ito po ay para sa 2,000 hours or 1,000 units. So with this, pwede mo na i-compute magkano rate per hour. Okay? Magkano nga ba class? Patunong naman. 100,000 pesos para sa 2,000 euro hours. Magkano problema to, ano? Magkano pa? Hello? Patunong naman. 15? Okay. Sigurado kung tama, pinakalculator, nakikita kayo na. Okay, ano tawag doon? That's what you call the standby rate per hour. Ang pinag-usapan natin, factory overhead. Okay, paano kinompute? Uh, 100,000 pesos divided by 2,000 hours. Ano yung 100,000? Budgeted factory overhead. Ano ho yung 2,000? Normal time. Which is also the budgeted time. Ganun pala, budgeted time ang pag-divide or normal time. Ang tawag sa result standard rate. So how do you compute standard overhead rate? Budgeted overhead divided by the normal capacity. Tuwing mag-establish ng standard rate, ang pang-divide normal capacity. 
Pag silent ang problem, walang given, walang budget, uh, walang normal, yung budgeted pwedeng gamitin, kasi siya rin yun. Ano resulta? Our overhead application rate, which is 50 pesos. So, pag alam mo na yung application rate mo, pwede mo nang i-apply yung overhead mo. Okay, paano ho natin i-apply yung overhead na yan? Plus, magbe-break tayo, pero after the break, tutuloy lang ho natin ito. No? Pakitandaan lang ho, ang overhead application rate natin, 50 pesos per hour, ang ating normal capacity, 2,000 hours. See you later.